Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with Mr. Truck. And we are going to be towing all of that with this. This big truck here, which is a 2015 Chevrolet Silverado 3500 with the Duramax diesel. And what is it rated at towing, Kim? This one is what a little over 22,000. Mm. And how much are we towing today? We're towing a little over 19,000. 19,000 with two trailers, folks, and that's coming up next. Not much has changed since 2014. This is a Duramax, a 6.6 .6 liter diesel that puts out 397 horsepower, but more importantly, 765 pound-feet of torque all the way down at 1600 RPM. And it's hooked up to a six-speed Allison transmission. This one is a four-wheel drive, so it has slightly less towing capacity than the two-wheel drive version. <laughs> How are we braking going down this hill? Well, we're great shifting, doing excellent. We got the exhaust brake, we got to turn that on. Uh -huh. So now we have all the help in the world. We've got the engine slowing us down, we got the brake slowing us down, we got the transmission slowing us down. And the trailer if we need it. Now I set the gain back down to six. It wasn't on seven, but because we have powerful brakes in the front trailer, there are electric over hydraulic disc brakes, hydraulic disc, very powerful. So I had to back the gain up or we would be locking up, not locking up, we would be uh, breaking hard and smoking, we don't need that. We have plenty of control where we are. So it's just where it should be, we're at six gain on the integrated brake controller. This is the first year GM has had an integrated brake controller works with electrical or hydraulics. So they, they're finally realizing that these guys with these big one tons are pulling the big trailers. And you need big brakes. General Motors has seriously taken it up a notch when it comes to the interiors of their trucks, especially this one. We're talking about different tones, different types of woods, there are three different textures in here, just right here at the door. Altogether, it is one of the nicer interiors. And frankly, I think it's taking the lead over Dodge, well, sorry, Ram, and Ford. The exterior hasn't really changed that much. It's a little bit on the soft side, but at least you get these nice little steps that are so easy to pull out, but at least they're easy to put away. It feels like altogether that it's a very competent combined system, that everything's working together in proper unison. Right, we have almost redundant systems. We have several systems backing up systems, three different systems helping us control this vehicle coming down. And we're towing 19,000 pounds. This is a reway, my ticket number 9352. Got everything balanced really well. The tongue weight's being shared between the trailers. We've got 2,000 pounds of tongue weight on the truck, so we can, you know, it's got enough weight to be controllable. Everything's balanced about right. The trailers look level, so our brakes are working at their 100% capacity when we need them. That's a kind of unique to Chevy. When you're using your exhaust brake and your grade shifting, it will let the RPMs run higher than most trucks will. Because it's no one, it, you know, it's not redlining it to where it's going to blow the engine up. There's no fuel going in there. So it's letting that go up there to help, you know, with slowing down the vehicle also. So as we're going downhill, no fuel's entering, but the pistons are still moving around exactly. and it's still, yeah, that's right. right. It's a big air compressor is what it is right now. So they're using that, that effect of the air compressor just to help control the truck too. So this has got a lot of systems to, to make you feel safe towing this much weight. In pulling two trailers like this, several things are important. You want to have the right lights, you want to have everything hooked up brake-wise. We have our wires going all the way through. We have electric brakes on a bumper pull. We have hydraulic brakes on the gooseneck very powerful brakes. So we've got four axles that are braking for us behind the truck. This is still a vehicle that a regular licensed driver can go and buy. 
and yet handle that much weight. That's incredible. Yeah, if you were an RV and totally recreational, you can haul this kind of weight and not necessarily need a CDL. So when you pass that, that threshold of being commercial. And all the wires work, the lights work, your blinkers work, they all work from the cab. Your brake controller runs both trailers, which is a good safety thing to look at. Now this one we have loaded with two water totes as we got the weight on here. Just made it down. We are now at the braking point to Andre, the angry Russian mechanic, to see what our braking temperature is. PDD, 408. Holy cow. 408. I didn't think I was braking that much. Okay. Zadia, 227. All right. Yeah, a little higher than I thought it would be. 227. Yeah. Yeah, you got all those trailer axles. See, that's what I was expecting from the front was over 200. Yeah. But it's still not yeah. too bad. I mean, the, and the braking's been working excellent. Voice is the same. Right. Brake control. First trailer, 87. Yes, that's yeah. right. I've got those Centromatic balancers on there. And oh, so it's covers. blocking the... Uh, yeah, they, mm. yeah, they keep uh, some of the heat off too, but they're, you know, they're for balance. Devinostadin. Run, Andre, run. 91. 91. So the back's a little, of course, there's no shields on the back. Yeah. Yeah, those had those see those are disc brakes on the front. They will actually dissipate heat better than the brake drums. We're like a cave where all the heat stays in. The drum. Yeah, and it's so that makes sense. Okay. Okay, he's he's good with that. Okay. I think he said something about my mother. Uh. He usually does. <laughs> I like the way the new Chevy's and GMC's look. I think they're aggressive without being, you know, overwrought. But at the same time, if you don't like chrome, <laughs> you're not going to like this very much. That's the most chrome I've seen on a front end of any truck thus far. All missiles. Oh, we're spinning. Whoa, we're on gravel. <laughs> Whoa, there's a big pile of dust behind us. And away we go. Power. Okay. So, folks, we're towing two trailers. We're going up the hill. This is the Ike Gauntlet. I've got the timer. Average time has been around the eight minute zone. We've got a little above, a little below. What we're trying to do is maintain a legal speed limit, which may be, uh, <laughs> it may necessitate wide open throttle. Um, considering that we've got 19,000 pounds behind us, it's bucking a little bit. You know, the bucking is actually coming from the third trailer, right? Yes, uh, the, the, the looseness of any kind of a ball hitch on a bumper pole, that, that pin has always got some slack. Feels like it's over exaggerated almost. Yes, I mean, you, got, you got two trailers together, you're gonna have a little more exaggerated bump. <laughs> So you can legally haul in Colorado a gooseneck with a bumper pull. You can't do two bumper pulls. And that has to do with the sway and the control of the trailers. Gooseneck's very controllable. The bumper pull needs a little help. Now these are all ball connections. This is a socket ball. This happens to be a two and uh, five sixteenths ball. And that's where everything's two. And it's a socket like your shoulder. So everything stays nice and tight and you'll get less jerk out of it. The gooseneck is also a two and five sixteenths ball. Of course rated higher, but it's a socket type. This is a really nice combination for controlling two trailers. Wow, you can feel that, but it's, I mean, any truck would be doing the same thing, right? Yes, that's got nothing to do with uh, the Silverado. It's the configuration of the trailers we're using. We had 19,000 pounds, we are doing well, and we are going uphill. Yep, at 60 miles per hour. But we've done this right with the brakes. This one here is full of metal hitches. That's where we got close to 9,000 pounds. This one's a little heavier. Usually you have the front trailer a little heavier. In this case, it equaled out to where this one's around 10,000 pounds, and it's towing very straight down the road, braking very straight, handling very well, the combination we have. Uh, 65 is the maximum speed limit of the cell, and of course we won't exceed it. But there are cases to where you might need to get a little extra run up to some of these hills. And here's the problem, with two trailers behind us, we're going to have a hell of a hard time weaving in and out of traffic. So, <laughs> we're yes. kind of, uh, if any truck is ahead of us going really slow, we're kind of stuck. Yeah, you're going to be my co-pilot for this, try to plot out and hit me when I can't see. I'll do my best. <laughs> 
Here's my gooseneck connection. It happens to be the same size ball as uh, what I have for my bumper pull. This is adjustable, so you can vary. You want to make sure your trader is level, your brakes work better, everything tows better when it's level. You got plenty of bed rail clearance on this gooseneck. And two, we've got some weight on the back of this trader, so it actually lifts up a little bit on the gooseneck. So we've got very little tongue weight on this truck. We've got just the right amount. I shouldn't say very little, we've got just the right amount. It's balanced out well, it's towing well, it's controlling well, but that's what you want to do. You want to adjust your neck, get all that fine-tuned, but uh, we're, we're, we're actually relieving some of that pressure by having that second trailer on the, on the hitch. One of the reasons we do this test, and, and, and Kent has been doing this for a long time, this is one of the most extreme tests you can do when towing. You think about it, you're basically pushing near maximum weight. You're, we're going up to a nearly 12,000 feet. It's just over 11,000 feet, actually. Yeah. And we're starting at over 8,000 feet, so there's a bit of a climb. And that climb is steep. This is one of the steepest highways in the United States, and it's one of the highest. So it does take a lot. Even with a turbocharger on top of your diesel, you're going to lose power. That's right. We're right under 3,000 RPM. I wish I knew what gear we were in, General Motors. Please give us a gear. Yeah, it choice. doesn't show a gear. It just no. says drive. Yeah, that's that's nice to have. Because when you're trying to test something that's great, it'd be nice to know at what point, at what speed, at what gear. I mean, we know it's a six-speed automatic. It's an Allison, right? Yes. And also, be a T1000. This is basically the same transmission they came out with in 2001, with, of course, some upgrades. This is a class five hitch on this. This is actually rated to tow 19,300 without weight distributing, which is pretty remarkable. And they have this reducer on there so you can still get to a two inch hitch. It fits in there real nice and stays put. The pin holds everything in, but this lip is what's magical about it. You slide it in, you're done. On some of these vehicles, you have to move that sleeve in and out with your third hand while you slide the, the receiver hitch in there, your stinger, your draw bar, but not with the GM one. Mind, guys we're towing two trailers that means that there are several axles behind us creating more drag so despite the weight and despite the uh, overall tongue weight and everything else that we have to deal with we're also dealing with extra drag not just aerodynamically but with yeah. those extra axles and that doesn't help believe me so having this two trailer setup is definitely a punishing way to test a truck yeah and it's an extreme way to do it which is what we do <laughs> That's what we do. We're extreme. Yep, yep. We're hardcore like that. If Roman was here, he'd say something like, um, we be hardcore or something, because he's a victim of the 80s. <laughs> um, well, we're doing pretty good, but I've noticed we're starting to trail off just a little bit, so what are we at now? Uh, we're, all, we're right at, uh, I'm checking out this it looks like 45. So folks, we have something very interesting going on here when it comes to sag, and that is, well, it was 40 in the corner when we put this trailer on and then it changed we saw it sag a little bit but what happened well it's back to about where it was 40 and a quarter loaded and empty and we only have a 2,000 pound tongue weight in there the second trailer is pushing down on the first trailer and actually lifts up a little bit so we're really balanced well this is this makes a nice design we got to continue to do that because that's not causing any stress on the truck the way we're pulling this yeah we're, we're at eight minutes and 30 seconds so we're already well over the time once again Super heavy weight, two trailers. Yeah. See, I'm touching the jack of the trailer, and this is the full length bed, the eight foot bed. And it's a seven foot nose, but you can see them very close. One thing you want to look at, now these gooseneck balls, a lot of the times are two inches ahead of the axle, sometimes four. That gives you that front axle weight that makes the truck stay still and not wonder. But I can't test out the easy drop tailgate when I'm jackknifed. I have to be straight in, in line to get my one inch clearance before my jack of my trailer. Some of you guys have questioned why we don't pop these things down into different gears. Uh, and there's a very simple reason for it. We want to do the very basics to allow the vehicle to work the way it was designed. So when they have a toll haul mode, which most of these trucks do, we put it in that mode and we just let it go and let it choose what it needs to do. That's also going downhill. We don't shift gears. We let the truck take care of all that. In this case, this GM did really well. Yeah, that's right. That's fair way to do it, otherwise you're, it's all wrapped around the skill of the driver. Yeah. If you let us mainly shift it, it could be a different person driving next time, and to be fair, we want the truck to do its job. Also, you might be wondering how much this baby costs. Well, it's as tested prices, just a hair over $65,000. You might think that's a lot, but look at the other vehicles in this bracket, and you're going to find that's a very competitive price, considering what you get for the money. Right, 
We are, we're almost there, almost there. Another 100 feet, no, more like 200 feet. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. <laughs> Trying to get another 10 seconds. <laughs> All right. Nine minutes and 59 seconds. Well, there you go. That's not a bad time. That's not bad at all. We lost a few seconds at the end. What was our, our, uh, our, the, the, our dead decimal? Yeah, it was 69. 69. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's very good. back out of the tunnel so our average was pretty much three miles per three gallon, miles gallon yeah. and that was tearing up the hill wide open throttle we averaged over 50 I would say what about say 55 miles per hour yeah we yeah we dipped down to 45 was about our low speed going up there yeah but that was near the end right when we had to slow down right it was a yeah now I know nearly 10 minutes seems like an awful lot of time to go up the Ike Gauntlet. Normally we average around eight minutes, but you gotta remember, we're talking about an awful lot of drag and an awful lot of weight. And what did we maintain? What, 55 miles per hour, Ray? Yeah, the lowest we hit was 45, and that's with 19,000 pounds of trailer. That's right, and we averaged three miles per gallon, which was with wide open throttle, baby. So, all in all, I say this is a competent truck, and it's especially good with holding gears and exhaust braking. And, and what else does this thing have? It's incredible. Well, you got, you got great shifting, exhaust brakes, you've got four axles with brakes on them. You got hydraulic brakes back there, so it's a very comfortable drive, very confident feel you got from the rig we have. I gotta say, this was a great rig, and this is a really good HD test. I'm sorry to say our interns are mentally disturbed and they like Chevys, so this is a fail, don't buy it. <laughs> The interns were driving in that Ford. They yeah, they were. Yeah, Ford. I thought uh, one of them had a spray paint can. <laughs> he was doing some bow ties. <laughs> Folks, go to tfltruck.com for news, views, and reviews, and we will be doing more dually testing in the near future. In the high country. High country.